Hi. So in this lecture, let's try to understand how to build this end-to-end -end data pipeline. And if you want to really know about all the basics of these services first, then I will recommend that you check out my course that is AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner available on AWS with Chetan.com where we have covered the basics of big data first and then we talked about all these services and then we get to this particular exercise. So if you are not aware of these AWS services, then I highly recommend to first understand about those services. Okay, with that going back to our lab architecture and let's see what we are going to do in this exercise. Right, so here the use case is very simple where we will upload the sample employee data which is in the CSV format to Amazon S3 which is our data lake. Now once in S3 we want to create a data catalog out of that data. So for that we will use AWS Glue and we will create and run Glue Crawler. Now it will crawl that data then it will create a Glue database and the table in that database. But that's just a catalog the actual data will still be in S3. Now once we do that what we want to do is we want to change one of the column in that CSV file and create a new CSV file. So just hypothetically the example that I have taken is that all the employees have salaries for say year 2023 and for year 2024 we want to increase their salary by 10%. So for that we want to do extract transform and load. So this glue job will pick the existing CSV file change the salary, increase it by 10% and will save that file as in year 2024 folder. So it will create a new data set. Then again Glue will catalog that data as well and that's where we will now have two different data set, one for year 23 and one for year 24. Now all the original data will still be in S3 just that it is catalogued into the Glue. Now because there is a Glue catalog we can query that data using Amazon Athena. So Athena will directly query this data from the S3 and there we can run any SQL queries that we want. And finally we can also visualize this data in the Amazon Quick Site by creating the dashboards. Right so that's overall premise of this exercise. And to begin with I need this CSV file and I'll be honest, I created that CSV file using chat GPT. So if you want, you can also create that or you can use the file that I have provided with this lecture. Right with that, now let's go to Amazon S3, create some folders so that our data is little organized and then upload this CSV file into the S3 bucket. Okay, for storing the data, I'll use the same bucket that I had created earlier, that is AWS with Chetan. And if you remember, we had put this file in this bucket. But this time, let's create a folder so that data is little organized. So let's call it company and create the folder. Okay, now let's go to this company folder and let's again create two folders for two different years. So we have the employee data for year 2023. And with glue job we will create new data for year 2024. So for that as well let's create this folder. Okay two folders are created and now in this first folder let's upload the CSV file. Now I already have this CSV file which I generated using the chat GPT and if I'll show you the content of this CSV it is very very simple. So it is all dummy data with the employee details, then location, email, hobby and the salary, right? So it's as simple as that. Okay, so this file has been added. Now we need to go to the glue catalog and we need to crawl this data. So for that, let's go to the glue service. And in here, if you just go here, you can see various options here. Now what we need to do is to create a crawler. So let's create a crawler and let's call it say company data and say next and we need to add the data source. So our data is in S3 bucket. So let's go there and select our S3 bucket and in that company and in that this particular folder. So let's choose that. Okay that is done. Now let's say add S3 data source and this is our data source and say next. 
Now at this moment, we need to provide IAM role for the glue service. So for that, we need to create a new IAM role. So let's go to the IAM roles and create a new role and the service will be glue. Now we learned all this in the IAM section, if you remember, but this time we are creating it for the glue service. Now with respect to the permission, there are special permission for the glue service. So that is AWS glue service role. And because the crawler will read from the S3 bucket, it needs S3 read permission. And later glue job will create new file in the S3. So for that, we need also the right permission. Now here I am selecting S3 full access, but in reality, you should only allow the permission for the specific S3 bucket. But I'm being lazy here and providing all the access to S3. Okay, and the name of the role, so say company data, glue service role and let's create the role okay that is done so let's go here refresh this and we should find our role there okay so that is done so next and now we need to add this data to some glue catalog database so we don't have any database there is just default one so let's create a new database and let's call it company and let's create this database now let's go here refresh this and we should find the company database right rest of the settings as it is and let's create the crawler okay so crawler has been created and let's have its first run so i'm running the crawler so now it will take maybe up to one or two minutes for this crawler to run so i'm pausing this video and i'll come back here okay so Crawler has finished and you can see that it has added one table. So for that, let's go to the database and to the company database. And you can see that there is a new table with the name Y2023. And it automatically identified all the columns in that CSV file, which means our data catalog has been created successfully. Now at this point, you can go to Athena as a service. And if you just go to the query editor in Athena, from here, you can select the database as the company and table as Y2023. And in here, you can write a SQL query. For example, select star from company.y2023. And if you just run this. Okay, so it says that before you run your query, we must set the output for this query. So for that, let's go here and select the S3 bucket where the output of the query will be stored. Now, if you are using Athena for the first time, you would have to do that as well. And in that case, it will automatically allow you to create the bucket with some random name like this. So let's choose the bucket and save it. Okay, let's go back to the editor and let's try to run this again. Now I ran that and you can see that we had 100 records in the CSV and we have same 100 records here. So now I can query my S3 data using the Athena SQL. And that was one of the outcome that we wanted to see out of this exercise. But we are not done yet. We have just done the half part. Now the next thing, if we go back to our architecture. So at this moment, we have the data catalog in the glue and we can query that data from the S3 using the Athena. But what we want to do is now, we want to change the data in the CSV and increase the salary by 10% and we will store the new data in the year 2024 folder. So for that, we need to create glue ETL job and write this business logic to change the salary. Now, how do we do that? For that, you need to write a Python code. So I have already got the sample Python code, which you can use, or you can also use chat GPT, which does the great job at writing the code. So the code will look something like this and we need to modify here and there. So I'm just copying this code as of now. Okay, so going back to the glue. Now this time let's go to the ETL jobs and we need to create a new ETL job and we need to use the script editor because we are writing this job from scratch. So let's create the script. Now in here, I'm just pasting everything and we need to change a few things. For example, the database is the company, but the source table that we have is 2023. And the target table should be year 2024. And in that it should create the new file with the name employees.csv. Right? 
so i think these settings are good enough and let's go to the job details the name of the job say company data for 2024 and the im role again we need to select the im role that we had created and rest of the settings as it is you can reduce the number of workers because it's not that large data set so we can process this with just two workers okay i think rest of the settings could be as it is and if everything is good let's save the job okay job has been saved and now let's run this job so job has started and if you want to see the progress you can just close everything here just go here back to the jobs and let's just refresh this and you can see that this job is there and it is currently in running state right so what it is doing is it is now reading the file from the s3 and then it will update the salary column and then it will create a new csv file and write it to the new location in the s3 and if you are wondering where did we change the salary so it was here where it is multiplying by 1.10 right so let me pause this video for a couple of minutes and i'll come back here okay so it just took one minute and you can see job has been finished successfully now with that we are expecting that it should create a file in the s3 bucket so let's go to the s3 and right now i am in 2023 folder so let's go in here and if you see this was the new folder and in there there is new employee.csv now i'm not opening this file but i'm expecting that it should have the modified salary data now how do we verify that now for that let's again create a new crawler and this time it will crawl this new folder now to be honest i could have used the existing crawler and i could have provided the folder up to the company level but in that case it just merges all the data into the single table i don't want that and that's where i am creating a new crawler for 2024 data so most of the settings as we did earlier so let's select the s3 bucket and this time let's select this particular folder right and add this data source next we need to choose the existing im role which was this say next and the database we already have that is the company one and that's it let's say next and create the crawler okay it is there now let's run this crawler right so again it will take maybe a couple of minutes for this crawler to finish and let me pause this video and i'll come back again here okay so crawler has finished and if we go to the databases and the company we can see that there are now two tables which means if we go to the athena and just refresh this we should also see two tables yes we do and in here if we just change this we should see the new table now did it increase the salary so i can't really tell by looking at this so let's query the older table but this time with the where clause where say employee id is this And let's run this query so for richard gill the salary is eighty thousand and three hundred eleven usd hopefully so let's do the same on different table and this time the salary is this much which definitely increased by 10 percent right so this means glue etl job has done its part where it updated the salary figures now to be honest the glue etl will typically load all this data into the data warehouse and that's redshift but for our exercises we just use s3 because it is easy and it is also cheaper to do this exercise amazon redshift cluster has a lot of cost so that's it really about this exercise but if we want we can also look at the amazon quick site where we should be able to create the graph out of this data 
So let's try that. Okay, so I'm into the quick set dashboard and if you are using it for the first time, you might have to do additional configurations as the console would suggest. And I also did that. Now, another important thing is the region. So make sure that you are in the same region as your S3 bucket. So I'm into the Mumbai that is AP South one and that can be identified using this URL. Okay, with that, let's create a new analysis. And for that, we need a new data set. Now we can directly connect to the S3 and can fetch the data in the quick site, but we really want to access that using Athena because then we can use the glue catalog databases and the tables. So let's select Athena and the name of the data source. So let's call it company data and create the data source. Then it will ask us to select our database. So that's the company and we want to visualize the data for year 2024. And in here we can either edit or preview the data or just continue. So let's select this and directly query this data and visualize that. So we can now really find out, for example, how many employees are across different locations. So count of records by the location and it should just fetch all the details. Now it says that you don't have sufficient permission to connect to this data set. Now this is the first time I encountered this error. So I just debugged a little and found that I need to update the permission where QuickSight service has permission to access the S3 bucket. And for that, I had to go to the US East one from where I can manage the QuickSight access. And then if I go to the security and permission, I had to update the permission for Amazon S3 where I added AWS with Chetan bucket there. And after I did that, the analysis shows the data. Now here you can see that I can see number of users located at different locations. So likewise, you can create different charts and graphs as per your requirement. And it is really very powerful BI tool of AWS. So with that, now we covered the entire demonstration where we got the data into the S3 and then we processed that data, created the data catalog, queried that using the Athena and now we are using QuickSight to visualize that data. So I hope it gives you complete picture of how the data is ingested, processed and analyzed in AWS. And with that, let's stop for this demo. Now, very important thing, if you are also trying to do this exercise, please delete everything that you created, especially the glue ETL job, glue data catalogs, and then quick site dashboards, because there is a cost to that and it is not included in your free tier quota. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this exercise. And if so, and you want to learn more about AWS, then I will highly recommend that you subscribe to this course and learn more about most of the AWS services. And this will further help you get AWS certified. But if not, Please like and subscribe to this channel and we will meet again in the next lecture. Thank you.